Father, Lord, we invite you into our midst. We pray for the supply of your spirit. We pray that, Lord, you come and lead us and guide us. Father, we commit our speaker into your hands. We pray that, Lord, you grant him utterance for delivery. Lord, we also pray that those of us gathered here will receive fresh ideas, new concepts, and insights. Lord, we pray that, Lord, our deliberations and discussions will be fruitful. And may the outcome of this meeting be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. We can do better. Can we give him a hand of applause? Or transfer delivery. We also pray that... We are all, all interested here, to know the purpose of this gathering. New concept so without wasting no more time, Lord, we, we will invite the, Lord, uh, the only director and discussion. of the Biotechnology and Nuclear Agriculture Research Institute to disclose the purpose of gathering. Without the purpose of gathering, we cannot proceed. Kindly give me a hand of applause. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our distinguished uh, former director, Dep director, Deputy Director General, Professor Victoria Pia. Our distinguished uh, binary board members. Our distinguished former staff and colleagues of binary. Our invited guests, binary staff, our friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. I am delighted to stand here on behalf of the Director General to welcome all of us to the 30th anniversary public lecture of the Biotechnology and Nuclear Agriculture Research Institute. Binari was established in 1993. It used to be the Department of Biology under the Kwame Nkrumah Nuclear, National Nuclear Research Institute. Then when the GAEC Act, the founding act was amended to give GAEC the opportunity to establish binary was established. And once established, we continued to do our work beyond what a department would do to now do it. And we've been doing that for the past 30 years. In these 30 years, we have been focused on applying biotechnologies and nuclear science. In doing that, we've been focused on everything from farm to fork. We've been working on soil, main soil, water, and nutrient management using nuclear techniques and related technologies. We've been involved in crop improvement, which has resulted in the release of... We've been working in the area of tissue culture, and when the country was in distress, and sometimes we have had to come in with this technology to help. materials, Binari came to the rescue of the country to produce planting materials for, for the people in the north. That is why today we out of EMCs and not be able to continue our production. Then when certain new varieties of crops were introduced into the country, Binari, the Orange flesh sweet potato was first introduced into the country. It came from South Africa. VPEG uh, contracted Binari to multiply these vines and then they sent to their members across the country. When MD2 was first introduced into the country, Binari through a subsidiary that was planting materials that was sent to the farmers across the country. Today, our pineapple yields are going down, going down because viral planting materials that they are using is very high, and 
does not allow the crops to attain their full yield potential. We are still in talks with the key stakeholders to culture to clean these materials off the viral load so that we can go back to the high yields we used to have in the past. These are a few of the things that we've been doing. We've been, we've been working in the area of entomology. We've been working in the area of food development and a lot of other things that uh, we have been working on. And this afternoon, the binary fresh yogurt, which is produced from our laboratories. So over the 30 years, we have worked hard to achieve certain things. And it is important for us to mark this milestone. I remember before my director, my former director retired, we planned to, so we resolved that we, will be, we should be able to observe the 30th anniversary, which is another significant milestone. And thankfully, we are doing it. So we started earlier in the year with our malaria awareness campaign, which is a campaign we do every year, going into the community research work and give back to those communities in the form of education and awareness creation on malaria and educating them on how they can protect themselves from malaria. Um, we started this on Dodi Island, then the next edition was in Dodowa. Now we move to Ochreku at Gaek, Gaek Business School. And then last year, or this year, um, as part of our 30th anniversary activities, we went back to one community that for the past more than 10 years, in our mosquito research project, they've been magnanimous enough to give us land to build an experimental heart station in that community. So we went back to that community to give back to them. And then we are and being used to carry out research in evaluation of existing and new vector control tools. And then in June, we celebrated. And cassava is one of the flagship crops that every, every center in Binari has a stake in and have been working on. We have our soil scientists who have been doing nutrient management to improve cassava production. And last year, on the farmer's field in one of our demonstration sites, they were getting up those where we included soil nutrient management and water management we're harvesting about 70 tons per hectare. Somebody will say impossible. But that, the data is there to prove it. So we decided that we, will be, we should be able to cassava systems. So we decided to celebrate what we call the first ever cassava week, which we are going to continue into the coming years. And at the cassava for our national economic transformation. Because if we focus on cassava and harness all the economic and food security benefits that we can derive from cassava, it stands as a crop that can transform our economy. Because you can get everything that you need from cassava. Then we also have what we have planned to do and why we are here today. So we have two public lectures planned for the 30th anniversary. Um, biotechnology, and then the second one will focus on our, our other technology that we're working on, which is nuclear science applications. And that will take place during the climate in November. Of course, that would be as part of that, then we'll have a, a grand debate to climax the anniversary. So today we are here to trumpet our banana. When we started, we knew that the technology requires 
regulation. So we were doing the old biotechnology to our food insects to control insects. Our um, plant scientists were using tissue culture to multiply. All these are conventional biotechnologies. But modern biotechnology that takes us into the nucleus manipulations requires certain regulations and controls because it's a technology that is like a two-edged sword. It can be used to cause harm or to do negative things, and then it can also be harnessed for better things. And we are focused on the peaceful and safe application that focused on putting in place the regulatory framework within which biotechnologies to be operated in this country. And that culminated in the, established, in the establishment of the National Biosafety Authority. Beyond that, we know that it's also a technology that requires proper public engagement and education. So with the help of AATF, um, this still running, it's called the Program for Biosafety Systems, PBS. And the PBS project is focused on public education and awareness creation. Within a safe environment. Then, of course, we keep doing a lot of things. New technologies that are emerging in gene manipulation which now is um, gen genome editing and all that. We have our scientists who are and, and make use of them. And in the coming years, we'll be establishing a gene editing laboratory that will focus on genome editing in our food safety, safety crops. Now, I think that these are things that we will need to highlight. And thankfully, we still have people who were established. So it's important to bring some of those people to come and highlight our achievements and how we have been blazing the trail in the area of biotechnology. And I just want all of us to sit back, relax, because we have a very competent person to deliver on this topic. And at the end, we would all be able to pick one or two. And of course, Gaek has played in biotechnologies in this country. On that note, I would welcome all of you once again. And that was spicy, purpose of Gadra. He has given us all the ingredients and the details we needed to know about the purpose of this gathering. Don't forget anything here. Even if you forget, then the theme for the gathering is the binary story. Everyone is a dignitary, but we still have some special people within our midst. Permit me to introduce or Atukwe Ikloti. Please, can you wave us? He is a board member. We also have Dr. Fariba. That was rather Dr. Salia. Professor Salia. Some of us are. He's also a board member. We are privileged to have three board members in our midst. We also have an honorable gentleman from MOFA, Dr. Gerald Asari Manti. Thank you for gracing the occasion. We also have some old benign. They are the role models we are learning from. Some people can say we're here 17 years ago when SNAS was established. Some people too can say we're here 15 years ago. We cannot. 
for 30 years and for some of them even more. We have our own Mr. Abraham Edu Jemfi with us. You cannot say the GIF. The good works he has done. He's still with SNA, so he's still part of the Gayek fraternity. We have Professor Daniel K. Asari in our midst. Scientist, an excellent one, and he's still in the business. We have the one and only, throughout the history of Gayek, the only female Deputy Director General. Now that we've introduced friends of Binari and Gayek, I will hand the microphone to an honorable lady to introduce the moderator for this function. I've been being part of his and was awarded MPhil Agriculture and Environmental Sciences from the Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology, Ghana, where he had BSc in crop science. In terms of his career, he joined the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, specifically the biotechnology in 2003. And he joined as a research scientist, but because of hard work, he was um, he attained the position of uh, principal research scientist. He has served in many important and problem-solving committees in the commission, and also a team chair HOD of the Department of Nuclear Agriculture and Radiation Processing of the School of Nuclear and Allied Sciences of the University of Ghana. His research interests in Ghana and worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, let's welcome our moderator, Dr. Wo Amitei. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Wenchi. Those joining us online, uh, I appreciate you joining us for this program uh, today. Upon learning that I will be the mod for this public lecture program to commemorate the 30th anniversary where was I 30 years ago I discovered through my I had then completed my A level and was undertaking my national service naturally I had no idea that Binari will be the institution that will support and nurture my research career and enable me to make positive impact on national development. Be gently labeling in challenging circumstances to create a more favorable environment for those like me who are yet to join the deceased and alive on this day. I express my gratitude and congrats to each one of them for such till this day. As motivation to me, every time I have had opportunity to be abroad on Esna, I have had always the chance of coming back to fulfill my responsibility and health strengthen binary. Environments. There are more alluring offers that more often than not are too painful to turn down. Moreover, considering the current, it takes a lot of patriotism to make the decision to return and to do one's bit in nation building. My hope is that in another 30 years, these names ours inclusive as deserving forebearers. I will therefore use 
as an opportunity to run, especially our younger colleagues, to put Ghana first. For there's nothing wrong with learning or working in scientifically and if today, let us make the most of our opportunity to return home and use our knowledge and skills to support Ghana's development. She is the best in the world and our only country. Thank you very much. Anything else I need to do, so let me move quickly to that. And for this, I'm going to introduce our speaker for the day. Blazing the Biotech Public Lecture. This team is perfect for the 30th anniversary of Binari because for Ghana to develop PD, we must apply scientific methods related to biotechnology and significantly transform agriculture. We cannot achieve food surplus the developed nations approached it, limited fields. We cannot call, I cannot call our 30th anniversary celebrations complete if we do not share Binari's story with the world. In this regard, no one is better qualified to execute this task than one of the former directors of Binari, particularly the most recent past director, Professor Kenneth Danso. Professor Kenneth Danso obtained his first degree in botany from the University of Caicos in 1989. He joined the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission as an assistant research scientist in February 1992. In 1994, he enrolled as an MPhil student in botany at the University of Ghana, Legon, and was awarded a nine-month International Atomic Energy Agency Fellowship in the Netherlands, where he completed the research component of his MPhil degree. He graduated in 1998. Between 2000 and 2000, Birmingham, UK, on a Commonwealth scholarship. His thesis topic was in vitro conservation of cassava, with emphasis on cryopreservation of in vitro micropropagals for long-term conservation of the crop. After his graduation in November 2003, he returned to Gaik as a research scientist and rose through the ranks to become chief research and associate professor until his retirement in January 2020. Professor Danso is an accomplished academician and research scientist. He served in various capacities. became the head of the then uh, Department of Plant and Soil Sciences until the creation of new centers in 2010. He was also appointed director of Binari Committee that developed the curriculum of plant physiology and tissue culture courses run by the School of Nuclear and Allied Sciences, University of Ghana, and subsequently taught these courses in 2006. He also used to be part-time lecturer at the Department of Botany, University of Ghana, where he taught economic botany. He has supervised several MPhil theses at the graduate school and has examined many PhD theses. He has also published in many high-impact journals and also reviewed many manuscripts for publication. He served as a chief examiner in biology for WAEC for over 10 years. Professor Danso was appointed UNIDO consultant to evaluate the banana tissue culture program in Uganda in 2013. He also, he's also an IEA expert 
on tissue culture and mutation breeding, and have been on various expert missions helping African member states to establish tissue culture laboratories. He was appointed a principal scientific consultant on the IAEA regional project for Africa and continued until his retirement. He has trained several research scientists in fellowship, uh, on fellowship in scientific visits. Professor Danso was also, has also impacted immensely to national development. He was a member of an expert group of review of draft national forest plantation program in 2012. He was also a member of the National Varietal Release and Technical Committee, board member of the National Seed Council, and a board member of the Food Research Institute of the CSIR. He coordinated the UNEF-GEF and program for biosafety in Ghana. He is currently a member of the Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology, OFAB, and has spoken on biotechnology issues, particularly on GMOs, at several fora across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause. Let's welcome Professor Kenneth Danso. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Amite, for the lengthy introduction. I thought you have summarized it and make it very short. Sometimes when you are giving such introduction, so thank you very much. And I am happy to be part of this uh, program today. Director of Binari speaking, and seeing 30 years of our existence of Binari, it seems to me as early yesterday. Because as a young guy, I've just been employed in Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. By the grace of God, we've come this far. So I must say, I'm happy to be here, and especially also to take part and to present this lecture, Blazing the Biotechnology Trail. The it's ahead of me. Uh, who have who should have maybe given the talk, but we don't know what what happened. So I'm and maybe representing all of them to give this uh, lecture for the sake of the lecture and where the this thing is. Uh, and also maybe I have to be by the computer to see exactly what happened. Uh, if the audience will give me the permission to do that, thank you. If we have a pointer, okay, don't worry, we, we, will, we will, uh -uh, we will manage. The binary story, I think, as told by the director, is over some technology nuclear culture institute, binary plays a unique role in the uh, life of uh, Ghana Atomic Energy and Ghana in science. So most often, we've been associated with only the agriculture aspect, forgotten the other aspect of the nuclear science. And because of this, of institutions, so things that are due binary are most often denied us. And it's a worry. And it's something that when I took over, I tried to overcome. Biotechnology had been in existence for a long time. Even before Carl Eric coined the term biotechnology, all of us been uh, uh, using or been applying biotechnology in various aspects. The production of beer, wine, and yogurts. Thank you very much. And yogurt the fermentation of cocoa beans, kinky production, as well as breeding of cows and edema, are all classified as biotechnology. And this is a traditional 
And these technologies have played an important role in Ghana, especially in Ghana's economy. We remember cocoa very well. I'm a cocoa farmer's son. And when you harvest cocoa, you crack the pots and uh, harvest the beans. The first thing you do is to ferment it. You put plantain sheets on the floor, put the cocoa beans on it, cover it. For five to seven days, you go and open it and they look brownish, very flavor. This time in memoria. Unfortunately, as a nation, we've not been able to capitalize it in our trade business with our international partners. And it's very unfortunate because I understand that before you are do, do, uh, that you are, without that, your chocolate is not sweet or it, 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 it will be rejected. So this is an opportunity for us to do that. But for since time in memoria, we've not been able to do that. So the technology has been with us. But for today, I'll just walk us through brief introduction, uh, Bev of Binary, and as a leader in biotechnology research and applications. So modern biotechnology, as we know, is just an amalgamation of our, oh, sorry. Modern biotechnology is the emerging of the knowledge obtained in biology applications and engineer them to make them use, more useful for us. So it's focused mainly, I'm sorry, I'm, I think I'm happy. And I'm sorry, I'm, I think I'm happy. And the way it replicates itself so that it can pass on the hereditary information to the next generation. So both traditional and modern biotechnology share the same foundation. That is the use of living organisms All that modern biotechnology is trying to do is to enhance or faster the processes of uh, what nature has already given to us. Of getting the products. And I think that that means the nature of man since uh, this and everything we want to add. So today's discussion is focused on modern biotechnology. advances in different fields such as engineering, physics, chemistry, and mathematics and information technology. So our phone here, this is biology, and we have just put technology application depends on the processes in biology. For example, we know cells divide, and uh, the mesmatic tissues, cells are able to, the, the medicines are able to divide on this cell division to regenerate plants. That's all that we are doing. So it's application of biology that we are, we are, we are doing. What am I doing? Sorry, I'm, I'm going to see this. So recent advances in modern biotechnology are a result of scientific knowledge biotechnology without mentioning Victor John Mendel. We know he's the father of modern genetics. And he came about uh, with the law of segregation using his key experiments. Then we have uh, but one, uh, another group that comes to mind, Watson and Crick. They discovered the genetic material as the basis for modern molecular biology because they are able to trans transfer genetic information by DNA. Mendel was depending on this Model. So the discovery of this uh, DNA material uh, enhances the, the uh, biotechnology in general. So the first product or the first crop to be genetically modified uh, is tobacco. This was uh, the thing to propagate the new plants to exist to be raised and gene. And this discovery led to a whole of whole lot of history about this and it took a long time. A lot of groups in various research labs came together to find this. But after discovering this, finding that the agrobiology uh, a nickname or a DA that will allow other uh, genes to be inserted into it uh, DNA uh, gave way for genetic engineering. So most of originated from this research that was done.
and are looking at the use that uh, it is giving to human life. People are afraid that, but if we don't control this kind of uh, 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 engineering that is coming or technology that is coming, it may fall into the hands of uh, uh, people who may use it for negative uh, uh, purposes. So there was to buy safety. So bio safety came into existence, and the, the, the aim is to protect the environment and human health from the possible adverse effects of genetically modified organisms. Before you inject genes into any other crop, in other agrobacterium or in other source into the same plant or another plant of the different family, you need to be repeated because if we don't take care, you may create a monster and you, and you just cannot be controlled, uh, uh, and if that one will have adverse effect, effects on human beings and the environment. When modern biotechnology was still at its preliminary stage, and uh, biosafety ensured that the technology is safe for use, it enhanced the potential of preventing organisms. And I think it's appropriate that that was done, because we cannot put anything onto the market or into or any group of people to use without actually knowing what you are doing. Need, uh, you need to go through processes. They have, they have to make sure that what you are putting up there is good for our human consumption, is good for the environment, and there will be no adverse effect on us. Three main uh, objective is to that the global agreement on adoption of Convention on Biological Diversity was held in Geneva. And uh, it came into a force on uh, 20. And currently, over 196 countries are involved. The main objective, preservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of the components of biological diversity, and fair and equitable source here, and move on to what Binari has been doing. Because we'll come back to uh, this same topic again when we look at the role of a binary in so I will skip all this thing. Let's come to the birth of binary. And uh, I'll just tell uh, telling Professor Apia that I came a bit late, so if I miss some of the history, then he has to remind me and go for what you, you know. So why all these developments are uh, biotechnology, creating biosafety and all these things were going on. Then Ghana was also preparing itself to safely harness the great potential of the then Department of Biology, Food and Agriculture of the National Nuclear Research Institute of the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission into Ghana's premier biotechnology and nuclear research institute, which gave birth to Binari in 1993. Then prior to the birth of Binari, the then Department of uh, for Multiplication of Crops in the 1980s. So what they did was to train a critical mass of scientists who were skilled in this binary uh, did that. Let me mention here quite a number of people uh, whom you may know. Uh, Professor George Wright, that's the first director of Binari, and I'm happy that they are all alive. We pray for long life to them. Professor Josephine Ketia Tebri, he was former director of Binari, Professor Harry Amwase, uh, former deputy director. He played a key role until, I think they are all around, uh, and, and, and they are all retiring today. They are still serving the commission. One by technology said, the government of Ghana through Ghana Atomic Energy Commission and the International Atomic Energy Agency entered into a technical cooperation project. The objective of the board building of our research capacity in tissue culture but the tissue culture has started before Binari came into existence. And I, I remember we saw that our lab, our lab but we have, we have all the facilities for tissue culture uh, in that lab. And they were uh, multiplying plants. And the time of the biotechnology that we were using was tissue culture. Tissue culture is simply uh, multiplication or regeneration of plants using cells, tissue, or organs. That is we believe that every part of the plant will be able to regenerate itself. One, because of the DNA. Once the, uh, the nuclear DNA is there, or the mitochondria or chloroplast DNA is there, exactly the same as the original plant. So it's a very good tool to use. 
And without the tissue culture, you cannot do this genetic transformation. So Binari initially focused on mass of scientists and technologists to do that. So the aim of that project was also to train young scientists and technologists to make the application of tissue culture sustainable in the country. I can assist others. They were all technicians who were trained in advanced countries in tissue culture laboratory uh, uh, so that they can come back to develop the tissue culture. And also to develop tissue culture for micro vocation of stable food crops in Ghana. But the initial, a lot of work was done. But later on, it expanded to include most of the staple food crops that we were using in the country. So all these developments culminated in the construction of going on. We realized that the, or the, the, the then uh, authorities realized that the lab was too small, hiding in an obscure corner. So uh, it was, this, they took a decision to construct uh, this new uh, laboratory. Then because of the progress made, the achievement made under that previous uh, in 1993 with the International Atomic Energy Agency. And this time, we should take bear in mind that Kwame Nkrumah, the University of Science and Technology, was part of this peace process. And the objective, again, was to tweak a predominant issue. It was a challenge because it reduced the yield. And on the unfortunate thing is that we can see only the symptoms of the disease. And sometimes the symptoms We want to clean it and make these planting materials clean from our or free from viruses, then we need to use uh, tissue culture. And tissue culture will capitalize, uh, as I was saying before, the marriage stage, because it infects the new cells, because of the faster rate of division. Two, the viruses have to be carried from the, uh, the, the stem, the, that is the xylem and the phloem tissues, to these uh, xylem and phloem vessels are not well developed. They cannot transport the virus or transfer the virus to that uh, tissue. So when you excise a small bit of it, to culture it on appropriate medium with some hormones, and you regenerate it, you have, you have been able to free the cassava from viruses. And molecular uh, assay or uh, tests have proven that, and you can uh, trans uh, give that to farmers. So, and again, we have to train uh, young scientists, and I think that is where we came in, and that's where we benefited. Because, uh, Indeed, Binari was able to develop efficient protocol for micropropagation of cassava and other applications of tissue culture, notably somatic embryogenesis in man bean and cassava was set from the IU. Then it, you must take notes. This is where Binari played a key role in the uh, uh, University of Science and Technology project. Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology established a tissue culture laboratory to train both uh, undergrads and uh, uh, graduate students. So you see, Binari. Sorry, is so. Let some of the achievements that all these uh, that some of the achievements that we, we we got from all the projects that we have done is that we uh, production of for grains and legumes of Ministry of Food and Agriculture, and I think they are still in existence. It was uh, contracted by the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to the Grains and Legume Development Board to produce uh, this is free planting materials of plantain for uh, the uh, MOFA to be supplied to the farmers. And this was the first time that tissue culture application or biotechnology was being deployed in this country. So grains and legumes were more than 19,000 plantlets were supplied. And the, the, they will come here with their pickup way to, to Kumasi. Then we train them how to win and transfer their plant about three months, then they give it to the farmer. So this is the first achievement of our tissue culture in the country. And this is the first time tissue culture was, our biotechnology was uh, applied, or sorry for giving that making board. And I must mention that Professor H. Amwati, Hari Amwati, was a key figure in this development. We have just come in, uh, we have just uh, come in and uh, we're learning technology and he and the technicians were all every, I can remember every month they were preparing them 
we were contracted by a private individual farmers. And I remember very well one farmer from Benin. He was so much interested in uh, a banana uh, plant, a banana that we export in this country. So he brought uh, a few suckers, and we multiplied them in the uh, lab for, for him. Put it up to him to take care of the, the, the plants because they were not growing. And when we went, to, because they were not growing, eh, to uh, uh, do it well. Then I also remember uh, another a friend of mine. He came, I forgot him, he used to be a pastor of Assemblies of God Church. He's now late. Plantains, and he planted them in the Volta region. And from his testimony, which we did not record, so that the tissue culture plantains were doing better, far better than those they obtained from the farmers. So these are all tests agriculture development in this. So these are all tests agriculture development in this country. Then, I think the director have mentioned this already, the introduction of MG2.0 in Ghana. When it was uh, the international market was demanding the MD2, why Ghana was exporting the uh, sugar loaf. I think the, the, the reason is that the sugar loaves uh, were more sugary. I think the sugar content is too high. So by the time they export it to the uh, European countries, uh, it will be getting rotten, and therefore they need to change. So uh, the MD2 came in to and receive the plant list. And that's one of the key rules of tissue culture. Because of tissue culture, you are not allowed to bring any plant from outside. The fear is that it contains uh, a lot of uh, microorganisms or diseases which you might not know. And I'm sure some of the diseases that we are experiencing in the insect, especially the fall amine web, were all introductions into the country. So they have to bring uh, true tissue culture, and we have to multiply them. That was around two, uh, 1999, 2000, thereabout. So we have to multiply them. Sorry, up to 2003, we have to multiply them for, for the farmers. So we supplied it, and the first one was uh, uh, taken over by, I think, the Pineapple uh, Exporters Association of this country. And, uh, when the technology was slow, the technology was demanding it at a faster rate than the lab could cope. So then we have to use the decapitation technique. It's a technique where we, we have to destroy the meristem, the, the apical meristem. When the apical meristem, you free the azurary bars so that they will uh, develop into shoots. So that uh, technique was used uh, to multiply it or to complement the tissue culture method. And uh, a lot of young men and women uh, around Binari, the new site, early in the morning, come and work under the supervision of our, our Professor Amwate. Then through this, uh, the, after the introduction of the MD2 into the spotted over, uh, I think about 1,500 plantless to South Africa in uh, this Phytocon jars. That's how we, we package it. And I think that project, I, I supervise that project. And uh, we, were selling, we were sending them to South Africa. And after we have sent two batches, and they were multiplying them, uh, I think the, the The first question they, uh, that they, they put to us is that, are we sure that the plant, plant lists are really uh, at, uh, MD2? And we said yes. They said we should prove it by doing a uh, sure that they are MD2. At that time, our molecular biology lab was not well set up, and we don't have most of the facilities. And also getting primers to do that was very, uh, would be a challenge to us. So we So that's I stopped. But thinking about it, I realized that because they have got it and they can multiply it, so they stopped. The same thing applied to the MD2. When the farmers they learned the decapitation technique, employed their own people, and they multiply it. As I speak now, if you go to our records, right? If you go to our records, the who were involved? The exporters association, of those uh, were involved. I remember the command director, Provin Josephine Ketia, traced them, I mean, so many occasions, and they did not pay. Because they known how to you know, multiply the planting materials on their own. And this is the kind of thing people have been playing with binary since its establishment. They think that it's a government institution. 
That is the mentality behind most of our businessmen who deal with us. Then I think the director also mentioned the multiplication of these free planting materials of our orange uh, flesh. Is it Josephine? Yes, Professor Josephine Kajasebri came with this group, with their leader, and they were holding only seven vines. About this long. I remember there were seven vines. So as a technician, Uh, they should give us some time. So we went through all the protocols, did the sterilization, did everything, and we were able to multiply the planting materials for them. And they came for it. I mean, large quantities. Unfortunately, I think one of the things that we've done in the Institute, which is not good, is to keep proper records of, uh, uh, of what we've been doing. I think this is the reason why it happened to BPEC. But uh, they continued. And I met some of the guys who were involved in the tissue, uh, the, the uh, sweet potatoes, and they were telling me that the yield was very high. I one time was at the down there going, and a friend who was uh, in the same church with me, they look at some of the orange fresh uh, uh, sweet potatoes we multiplied. It was sending them to the uh, airport for, for uh, exports. So they benefited. But I don't Then let's come to some of the research that binary championed. In fact, for the first time in Ghana, Ghana brings sport virals. So this is a media report that the Biotech and Nuclear Agriculture Research Institute of Ghana Atomic Energy has identified a new virus, Ghana brings sport virus, infecting the free northern and greater Accra regions of Ghana. So the virus was identified during a field survey conducted as part of a PhD work by Dr. Andrew Sakodie, a PR. So uh, this project was funded by the Australian uh, government, international uh, development. So we now know, uh, as at the time of this, only been reported in South Africa and nowhere else in Africa. So it's a major discovery, and I think steps were taken. Uh, it was sent to the uh, the these people at Pokwasi Plant Pathology. Then we were also engaged in studies on the transmission and elimination of phytoplasma in coconut using zygotic uh, embryo culture. I think all of us, of the fact that we are losing our coconut plantation, especially the West African toll. Formerly, if you travel from Winneba to Cape Coast to Takradi, you see the West African toll plant, a, a, co a coconut growing there. Uh, because of the kids in poor disease, they are, so the French, we entered into a kind of research agreement with the French embassy and decided that we would trace the transmission of the, of the phytoplasma. Is it that they were transmitted from the embryo or it is when the plants are on the fold that the phytoplasma attacks it? So it was uh, uh, something that we have to uh, uh, find out. So what Binari did was that we went to tackle it with the phytoplasma. Then when we came, what we did was to do embryo culture. So we set up a control that is a uh, uh, clean material. We chopped the embryo into two, took part to uh, Takradi for molecular analysis to make sure that the disease is there, because that's the only way we can prove after we've regenerated uh, plants free from the plasma. Then we will also uh, culture the rest. And we were successful in doing uh, this coconut uh, uh, embryo rescue or embryo culture quadrangle there. It's not growing well because of the soil, but that is the first tissue culture coconut that has been planted in this country. And it's there now. I don't know why it's not bearing fruit. So <laughs> the, the, the area is not good. So through that, we did a lot of work on coconut tissue culture. But the story is that we're not able to, the project was not able to trace whether the phytoplasma is transmitted embryo to the uh, plantlets. Even though uh, there were a lot of uh, things that were playing role, but we're not able to, to, to actually trace it. So that became a challenge, and that one was also translated. translated. Then we have also worked on our tree crops. Our adult, uh, tree crops are oil palm, and we're trying to do haploid culture, haploid develop a haploid culture 
we will, we will actually reduce the, the life cycle of the plants, especially the processes that breeders will take to, to get a, a new variety. So this uh, the leader and there's also an, uh, a, a TC project. And uh, what uh, we did was to uh, irradiate the foreign grain and try to Uh, and transfer it on the, 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 the uh, sigma of the oil, uh, oil palm nodes and regenerate it. So this is uh, the irradiation, the effect of the irradiation. This is the control. You see, when this is done and you, you generate them, you can develop your, your destiny. What it means is that those that are well, coming up are half ones. And therefore, they, 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 they are easy, they are homozo uh, homo application of cultures so that you get dihaploid or we we'll say diploid hyploid into plaquette so you get uh, those months and cycle because oil palm will take not less than well even the hybrid will not take less than three or four years before you produce food so if we are using a conventional breeding four years plant it again and uh I wait for, for this thing before you take your records and this thing. It, it's waste time. So this is one of the shortest way of doing that. And I think the project uh, went on for a long, uh, some time. And because of our IEA coordination, we, con we couldn't continue. So we have to end that project. So you see, tissue culture is playing a key role in the development. Let's look at current research that is going on in the institute. That's why the financial constraints, and I must tell you that if you are sitting on the seat of the director now, you always be sweating because you always be thinking of where to get money to do your research. I, I remember when I went over after a few weeks, some people saw me and said, Hey, Ken, you are not doing well. I said, I'm not. After. But despite that, they are doing quite well. And I think now the research is now moving into molecular biology because tissue culture has now, be, now become something like routine. One thing about tissue culture is research aspect. When the protocol is finalized and you give it to the farmer, it becomes a routine. So everybody now can do it. So now they are moving into uh, uh, molecular biology. And one of the projects they are doing is a uh, developer metagene treatment of color in somatic embryo. Now, Professor Brown's trick, as far as the records is concerned, uh, I'm not sure we have it in Ghana here because it's a disease that is uh, limited to uh, the East African countries. And they are very devastated. It is only cassava disease that affects the leaves, the, the, the stem, and the tubers, mosaic virus. Ose can harvest the tubers and eat, only that the yield will be low. But with this one, it destroys the tubers. So you will not be able to, to so you will not be able to color, as you see here. These are part of a leaf tissue that have been put on a, a, a medium. It will form colors, and within the colors, you see these green scratches coming. They are all embryos. We can isolate these embryos and convert them into plantlets. So we believe that because this one we can easily reach, or the institute believe that because we can reach, because it's uh, more, more or less a sing single cells, uh, we can read them. It's proper for us to uh, irradiate them or use chemical metagens. And secondly, pragmatic uh, tissues. So they are always uh, divided, and therefore, as they divide, and if you've been able to actually insert your DNA or make changes within the DNA as divide, you'll be able to get your mutants coming out of uh, them. So this project has been running, and I think, uh, some time now. Now, one of the things that Binari is also doing is breeding for illness in Kula uh, through in vitro metagenesis. And that's why I said Binari is. We use both uh, biotechnology and me, uh, metagenesis or mutation breeding. This is a combination of uh, uh, in uh, tissue culture and irradiation. That's why we call it in vitro metagenesis. And its advantage is that because they are in vitro materials, the uh, least dosage will be able to bring about changes within the DNA. So if the facility is even low, as I'm hearing now, you can still use some radiation. And I believe that if this project uh, becomes successful, 
then we'll be able to shorten the breeding cycle of our uh, not uh, share nuts. Binari was able to do a uh, research on the germination of share nuts, and uh, we're able to grow that uh, the share nuts here, and within three to four years, they started bearing fruits. And I remember I carried the nuts to, to uh, uh, the director, the then minister for for uh, for uh, food and agriculture, and I told them this is what we have done, and therefore give us money to to continue the research. And the answer is, yes, we belong to Mesty, so go to your uh, one of the things that works against us. Then. Yeah, we, they are also doing screen of sweet potato virus and cultivar resistant breeding using conventional molecular approaches. And I think uh, if you look at the virus, sweet potato virus, the way it is devastating. When this thing happens, it means that the tubers are not going to be well formed because uh, photosynthesis has been reduced. But if you clean them, you are going to get these clean materials which will yield very high. For, for you. Now let's come to binary and biosafety issues. Once again, Binari pioneered biosafety programs in this country. Binari, you see, like we said, we don't tell our story. We were the first tissue to, to apply biotechnology in this country. Unfortunately, all the benefit went elsewhere. And we are also the first institute to lead in the bio, uh, 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 biosafety systems in, in this country. Who initiated all these things? We were housing the, the National Biosafety Committee. And because of that initiation, we initiated with the United Nations Environment Program, Global Environment Facility Program, and uh, Binari was housing it. Binari provided the critical manpower for the NBC. Then uh, the, pro uh, the legal and administrative mechanisms to effectively domesticate. The Cartagena Protocol. We know Cartagena Protocol on biosafety, making sure that are uh, uh, all protected. Then that led to the formation of the National Biosafety Framework in, uh, in Ghana. And through the National Biosafety Program, Ghana became a party to the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety and the Convention on Bio Biological Diversity on September 1st, 2003, and ratified right same in May 2004. And because Because of this graduation, we could do uh, uh, research. See, the passage of uh, this one allows scientists to conduct trials on GM in Ghana in the absence of a substantive law. Because the law, this one was formulated long before the, the law on biosafety was passed. So we cannot wait for the law to be passed before we do research while other countries are doing it, even in the, within the same sub-region, West Africa region. So this LI has us. And it's the key role played by Binari in the establishment of the NBF that led to uh, these, uh, 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 that led to research in bio this thing. So a uh, passage of Biosafety Act also followed. Then, who championed the bio safe, uh, National Biosafety Authority? Because we're housing it and we're doing it, then we said uh, it came to a point that the government decided that then the Biosafety Authority to, to actually take responsibility controlling the application of genetic modified organisms. Actually, it's not cancer. There will be always opposition. So the establishment of this authority uh, will regulate the research and application of our uh, biotechnology in the country. And we house the offices, and been, uh, I think Gaia also are located land for the research. The office, the National Biosafety Safety its, uh, its construction and everything was supervised by uh, staff from Binari, and they were playing a key role. So we, we, we did that job for, for them. Then our collaboration with the International Food uh, Policy Research Institute. So since 2005, uh, I've collaborated with the International Policy Research Institute on biosafety uh, system. And this biosafety system program is very important to country because it expands the uh, producer choice. I mean, we can do a lot of things on the uh, 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 
on uh, biotechnology research that will be accepted by, by the, uh, the entire community. Then consumers, uh, we train consumers and uh, people or stakeholders. Then we also facilitate the trade and promote agricultural research and development. And these are very important for us. The, the challenge we are facing as a nation is that we, we find it very difficult to support research. So when we hear anything a bit negative or some kind of uh, adverse comment or about a technology, then we capitalize on it. But I've always been arguing that from scientific point of view, genetic engineering is safe because we are doing conventional uh, uh, breeding already. And that time that you have to wake up early in the morning, I remember uh, my friend uh, Wanda will wake up early in the morning, come to the field and go and do uh, what? Uh, transfer pollens to the stigma, and you will go back and come to work. These times are past. I mean, by technology, you just look at the genes, insert the genes there. So if the idea is that it's not safe for us, the technology is good. The scientists ourselves, Ghanaian scientists, should actually adopt the technology and apply it. So my safety system came to our rescue. And this is a field of uh, some of the trials they were doing because uh, we've had all this training uh, for them. Currently, what is happening is that uh, help, uh, uh, Binary's effort in Ghana's biosafety programs have uh, culminated in approvals for confined field trials, cowpea, rice, cotton, sweet potato. I have seen the cowpea myself. I've been to the rice field myself, and I've seen the cotton uh, myself. If they grow the genetically modified one and the conventional one, you, if you are not careful, you will go and destroy the conventional one, thinking that is the, the, the GMO one, because they look the same. The only difference is that the genes that are in them are different. And on the cowpea, you hear the farmers themselves saying, ah, there are no cowpea here. Or there, there are no cord bearers here. There are no uh, double worms that are destroying the cotton. Yeah, we don't find them on the GMOs because of the, 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 the GMO or the genes in it. So the technology is good. And it's all because of Binari's efforts. It's Binari who championed all these things in the country. Currently, I'm hearing that uh, these uh, genetically modified uh, crops uh, very soon will be on commercial scale. They are going to be on commercial scale. I think that the NBA will have more details about this. But they currently, they are, they are going to be on commercial scale. So in short, uh, before... I come to the say thank you. Uh, Binari has really done very, very well as far as the biotechnology development in this country is concerned. Right from tissue culture through uh, molecular biology to uh, biosafety system, it is Binari that led the, uh, the, the, the path. We chatted and all other institutes are following it. But unfortunately, because of the nuclear applications attached to our name, we have, find it, we have found it very difficult freeing ourselves. Probably we have to use tissue culture to eliminate the, uh, that kind of stigma from us. So <laughs> we, we've done a, a lot, and I think that the institute will need to be supported to continue the work that they are doing. And as the director said, this is just the biotechnology aspect. The nuclear techniques aspect is yet to be uh, uh, discussed. So I want to thank you for listening, and I'm glad that we'll also go and tell the story to others for them to come. Thank you. Please can the applause continue? <laughs> Professor Danso has been standing for more than 30 minutes. So I think we will give him permission to sit whilst we take a couple of questions. We will take five questions. I can see one hand here. Okay, we will take the first question and then we progress. Hello. Mine is not a question. Uh, when the speaker was speaking, he said uh, there's, there are people who were here before he came. So if he leaves something out, we can add it. So 
So that's why I'm up. Uh, some of us were here even before we got married. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, there was something which he left out, uh, and that is our collaboration with Cocoa Research Institute. Uh, in we have our first head of department, or it was the first uh, head of section, was the late Dr. Aeke Amo. He was very interested in this uh, search for uh, control of the swollen suit disease of cocoa. So he started working with Cocoa Research Institute. He was an entomologist, and uh, later on he added uh, the nuclear aspect to it. So I remember when I came in first, he wanted me to work on this project. So I had to learn uh, some breeding, because my, my uh, background was in agric. So I went for a program in uh, breeding for disease resistance. And that included tissue culture and other things. So when I came back, we started working first with the cocoa beans. We radiated the beans, and then we planted them. And they came out with different, uh, showing different uh, morphological characters. And so we also added the insects, because it was an entomologist. And we will grow the plants and then put the in insects on to find out whether they will be able to uh, uh, transmit the disease and all that. So uh, as that was going on, uh, he also was having discussions with the scientists in the Cocoa Research Institute. So they also started working using the pollen, trying to see whether they could uh, uh, get the resistance of this uh, disease through the pollen. So uh, we had an agreement. At that time, we had a small uh, gamma irradiator, small one, gamma cell. So they would dispatch a driver from here very early in the morning to go to Tafu to collect uh, pollen and then come and irradiate and then send it for them to uh, pollinate. In fact, that was how the research on the pollen started with Cocoa Research Institute. And uh, through that, the, uh, after the pollination, the, the resultant uh, seeds were planted. So within some years, they were able to uh, establish the uh, plantation, small plantation of uh, cocoa, which eventually uh, showed signs of resistance to the swollen shoot disease. Then, through us again, some people were, and through the TC programs, some people were trained. And so, as usual, after they got the training and then they got their plants, they forgot about us. And I remember when they even uh, uh, published papers on this research, they never mentioned uh, atomic energy. So this has been a problem all along. And the other thing I want to find, uh, bring up is the fact that initially, when uh, we, uh, the department proposed to have this uh, institute, it was a complete uh, approach to biotechnology. It included plant, food, and animal biotechnology. 
So we had uh, uh, researchers put up proposals, and uh, it, of course it went to committees and so on and so forth. And there were a lot of politics in there. The IAEA supported us first with the tissue culture and then uh, hoping that we will progress. Then uh, we wrote, uh, we started uh, seeking collaboration. So we uh, wrote to Cuba. They, 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 were, they are very much advanced in biotechnology. So we wrote to Cuba and then we started this uh, Ghana-Cuba collaboration. So I remember we had a meeting and we're going to have uh, develop vaccines and all that in the animal aspect. Uh, they, after the first meeting, they scheduled another meeting, but we were cut off. They gave us a wrong uh, time of the, <laughs> of the meeting. So when the binary uh, delegation go there, the meeting had ended. And that is how that project got to the Animal Research Institute. And so, you see, the argument, whenever there is any project coming to the country, they will, especially the CSIR, if there's somebody here, a person should be, CSI will say that you people, you are nuclear people. So you have to stick to your nuclear. So the food aspect was also taken away from us because, of course, they said the food research was already into food. So this is just, uh, by the way, to give you uh, information about some of the diff uh, difficulties binary has been facing, and the fact that there's still the potential here. I don't know how we are going to go about it, but the potential is still there, and we need the support. So if individuals could also help us with maybe some external uh, assistance or uh, collaboration and so on, it will be welcome. Thank you. Please, can we get another question from the audience or contribution? Let's tell the binary story. Hello? Okay, yeah. Thank you, Prof, and thank you, Madam, for all the good talk. Now, I just have a, a comment that has to do with, why didn't you tell your story here? You know, we've been talking about this communication, telling your story, even at our board meetings. And so if I'm hearing here, you've done all this good work, and you are not even credited, it means you're not doing something. Why should nuclear be a disadvantage? Can't we turn it into a positive thing? Just think about it. You can turn atomic energy or nuclear or whatever it is into a very positive use so that you, it's not always negative. It was only one time it was used in a negative way, which was bomb. And since then, it's negative. Can we do something big or just small to turn it? Else, we wait for the next questioner or someone who also like to make a remark. Let's take this biotech codes. Yes, uh, I, I think that we, the three of us, are very worried about yeah, let some the board members speak. <laughs> yes, and um, I will also add to it that um, conspiracy theory always exists. It's been there all the time. It's something that we need to fight. And we only fight it with 
showcasing with research evidence. And just as Prophet said, you tell your story by showing the good things you've done. And don't expect that you change everyone to your side, but you get majority onto your side. Um, the fear that uh, Prophet Danso was saying that the, the name nuclear is worrying you, I think is rather an advantage. It gives, it puts you in a certain niche. Uh, you assess some funds that the others will not. And using radiation technology in different ways. They, I mean, there's an endless area in our economy which the others can compete with you. So make use of that. You are not the only one. It's all over. I can give you several examples in this country. Take Ministry of Food and Agriculture. They'll do more food, uh, more, uh, more agriculture, and leave the food. You produce the crops now to consume it, it becomes a problem. It's a niche underutilized. We just mentioned the CSR here. It's Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. They'll do the scientific research, leave the industrial side. So you end there. I mean, the application, getting, making the point where you make money, you, you leave that one. And I think we are doing the same thing with Binari here, too. You do more of the biotechnology one, and there are competitors all over. There are technologies that once they go out, the people don't come back. You, you can't run away from that. But where it gets to the other side, where you may be applying the uh, nuclear side, you will see that you can hold people more in your fold. So let's not drop that cap at all from what we do. Thank you. The use of the nuclear is, is not that uh, we are uh, disadvantaged, but they use it as an argument against us. You see, the IEA, when we are giving a technical cooperation uh, uh, program, is for the whole country. And under that uh, te uh, technical cooperation program, people get trained from the universities, from the research institutes. That one, nobody talks about it. But when there is maybe a tip or something from a Greek, or for us, when we want to uh, also assess, then they will try to elbow us out, you see? And uh, for instance, if we are uh, talking about uh, uh, other aspects like radiation of food and so on, first of uh, if you do the work on eradication, you have to find out what is happening to the food. Of course, so we'll go into food science and all these other things. But then they will say, no, your work is nuclear, so you should stick to nuclear. So it is they who want to push us out, because they have seen the, uh, the uh, advantage we have, that we have this nuclear where they cannot come. And we also want to assess. So that is the fight now. So maybe a better technique to fight them. Thank you very much. I have a number of comments and maybe suggestions. I think fighting them is by showing what you are doing advantages that you have because everywhere in the world these things occur. So just tell your story and it will speak for itself. And then uh, I don't know whether uh, Madame would mind putting on paper the story, the omission that uh, was made in the presentation. So maybe Director could have a chat with you if you don't mind so that you put it on paper. Then it will be inserted into the documents for today's meeting, my little suggestion. But my own comments, with regard to people, you know, learning your technique and then they disappear or they tell you stories, I wonder whether you draw up contracts.
when you are dealing with this, like South Africa. Then I know elsewhere in the world, when you are doing something, there's a contract that if you generate data or any other product from what we are giving you, you must acknowledge your, you know, there are limits to what you can do. But if we don't do that and we just think we are helping, you'll always run away with things and then you'll be at the losing end. So maybe you should consider these things. I mean, nobody does it anymore. There should be contracts so that you can always benefit from your efforts. And then patenting, I don't know whether you, you have um, ideas on whether you can patent some of those things. That's a way to protect what we do here. And then with regard to the coconut uh, capes and pulse rubies, I know some time ago, CSIR, they had a unit at Second D where Dr. Derry and Mr. Nkansa were trying to identify the vector of the, of the virus. I don't know that you were working with them. Yeah, so, so they were also trying to do the same thing. So maybe, uh, I don't know. The other one is with um, the tissue culture. I know, again, at one point, Dr. Champong of Botany Department was also, she had a lab there. And I think hers is no longer, yeah, I don't know what relationship you had with her. But she also had that project that was running about the same time or after yours. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm sure if you have some of these contracts, you know, you don't always lose out. You, you have to benefit. Because you are the trailblazers from what you have heard and what I, the little I knew already. You shouldn't lose out at all. Because you are doing things that nobody else can do in this country because of the nuclear applications and the aspect that you do. So this is a little contribution I would like to make for now. Thank you very much. Yes, my question is, do Binari have a training program for our local farmers in Ghana concerning tissue culture? And if they have, why are we not feeling the impact? Thank you very much for these comments. They are well taken, and I think our writer and his team will look at them. I'll just give a brief comment on the cocoa uh, research uh, with, uh, the institute did with our cocoa research institute. I think when I came into, uh, not even as the director, as a scientist, I, I was also much interested, and I think we followed it up. And I. Uh, I remember in 2008, there was going to be a symposium in uh, Vienna, and therefore we also put uh, a, a title, a topic that we want to present, and uh, that is the effort of our uh, mutation induction in Ghana, the effort we've made so far. So I went to TAFO to have a discussion with them, and actually the work they did is still there. They told me that there's a plot for uh, irradiated cocoa seedlings. And the, the, the whole story is that after they have done the work, it is only a small symptom of the virus they saw on the cocoa. So they have that for there. And from what I heard, they include it in their breeding programs. Yes, that's what I heard. And uh, we, I think uh, we documented this in the, uh, we, we presented a paper in Vienna in 2008 on it. I talked to the then director, Dr. Eduan Puma, about it and uh, went to the scientist. So uh, that work uh, is still there, but I don't know why it has been uh, shelved. Nobody knows the reason. The second D uh, vector, this, yes, we team up with uh, the research lab at uh, Takrade uh, to do that work. So we're doing it together with them. And it was sponsored by the French embassy. Uh, I think we went far. We went far, but the, the, what the outcome 
is from their end where they did not get to know. But we did the tissue culture, we generated the plantless, then gave it to them so that they would do the molecular aspect there. Uh, so we were, I mean, they were involved. We, it was a joint collaboration uh, with them. The last question is on training of the training of the uh, farmers in this country. I think uh, that has been something Pinar have been doing all these days. Only that they don't come as individual farmers. Sometimes they come as a group. Uh, so they come and we train them and they go. In fact, uh, not only even private farmers are uh, institute. There's a lab at Sugakope now where they do a lot of flowering for exports. And they are using tissue culture. It's seated on the... Oh, thank you. It is seated on the, uh, the river, the what? Yabota River. And before they started, they brought their people here for training. And we charged them for the training. And uh, they acquired their skills and left. So we've been trained a lot of people. You see, but the, the, the problem is that people don't want to commit money into our research. They always want to benefit from our research, but they don't want to commit money. And secondly, policymakers are also not helping us the way we expect them to, uh, 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 to do. There is this uh, pineapple farms at Ojobi, uh, Bordwasi area, very big pineapple farms. I don't know, I think they are Italians. So hundreds of acres. And they wanted to bring pineapple plantlets into the country. So I think the ministry directed them to come to us. And they came, we sat down, we went to the field, we discussed everything. I don't know whether it's the quantum of money involved or whatever it is. We don't know what happened. It fizzles out. And but I think they were able to bring the pineapples into the country, but what means, I cannot tell. So, so these are some of the challenges. You see, if you have an institution, a local institution, and you want to do this in the country, what do you do? You put, I mean, a restriction. These things can be done by my local institute. Use it. You see, but they didn't do that. Then they leave them. Sometimes you are at the office and somebody says, I have brought these things from us. I multiply it for me. And I'll tell them that, look, that is not the way. Go to a plant technology division. Then they give you the opportunity. Then bring it. We'll do it for you. So these are the things that we, we don't want to support our research our institutes. If you come to, to uh, Gaikie or Ibinari, most of the research that we are doing, they are all collaborations from our side. Because the, we have good scientists with good ideas and uh, innovations. When you say that you are going to do that, then they will ask you where is the this thing? Uh, support for it. So it is, it is policy makers and uh, also our attitude towards the things that we uh, uh, towards the research is within that is government so it, it should be free. But it's not like that. If we are able to align our Programs very well. Did you milk that the Nigerians want to take the market from us because they are asking whether it's GM uh, product or not. We do a lot of first risk analysis, so we don't sleep. We do a lot of work just to convince them that they are okay for that market. So when this product are released, let's be aware of it. And I'm sure the director will have a lot of contacts, so we may have information to communicate to keep that business. The second part has to do with the fact that when you pick mango, the Indians are dominating. And to America and Europe, you do a min not a minimum of 17 hours taking away internal travels for the product to get to the market. And we have between five, hour, five to six hours to Europe and then 11 to 12 hours to America. And what they are beating us with is irradiation for fruit flies, and I know you have the technology here. So is there a way to scale up such that trucks move through, we do our customs, immigration checks, and they move faster for us to get the market uh, back to us. This is what I can put to the board to help if that chamber can be upscaled to bring back the market that we have. Thank you.
the meeting can still progress with two more comments or questions. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dr. Alassan. I work with the Ghana Export Import Bank. And um, I'm very impressed with the presentation by Dr. Dance, uh, Professor Dancio. And uh, as a student of science, um, I'm surprised that this issue of industrial science linkages is being a challenge all this decade. Uh, I wear several hats. I used to be a journalist. And uh, in my media career in the early 90s, I used to have a very close working relationship with CSIR. And that is because they intentionally courted me. And so I spent several weeks, several days with them when they are doing their research. And I don't write news stories. I write features. So I take my time and articulate. I don't see that coming out from your end there. I don't see that coming. You don't cultivate the media to popularize and ensure that your research is well known. So that's point one. The second point is that industrial uh, commercial science linkages. I discussed with CIR some time back, and the, the mistake they did was to get marketing officers in all their research institutes. And that was a big mistake. The person become a staff, and the person is not motivated. Or the intent doing anything similar. If you haven't had any marketing department, then rather you subcontract to an outsider who will work for commission base. Mr. Danso was talking about negotiating. I don't think scientists are good negotiators. <laughs> they are good negotiators. So when you have these people doing pineapple and they come and you want to negotiate, no, 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 no. It doesn't work well. You need to get people. And the world, you get them, they come work, they get you a deal, they get a percentage, they walk away with their money. And you also get your share of the money and you run your business effectively. or you can help them work with them. It's a partnership because they know that your bread is going to be buttered, their bread will also be buttered. You know? But don't try to get everything for We don't know how to share. We want to have everything for ourselves. In private business, that's why businesses are not sustainable. Our industries collapse every time. And so until you work with other people who are not directly involved in your area. All the examples you gave are people who are in your area of research. I didn't hear an example of any group that is outside. Those two hands caught my eye. So afterwards, there will be no more questions or remarks. Because there are two official remarks. That is and when the, the uh, gentleman from MOFA, uh -huh, you said something which caught my, came, uh, caught my ear, that uh, you are competing and has been out of uh, used for the past, I think, three years or so. And we can't get funds. And that is uh, another area altogether. So I would leave it just at that. Remarks from the audience? Allow me to quote from a biotechnologist by name Ryan Bahencourt. Let's think about it. We will take a remark from the moderator, and afterwards, the director of Binary also give another remark. 
always to appreciate Prof for a very impressive presentation. The topic of biotechnology is quite a difficult one. Hold on, not. It's a very impressive one, and I congratulate you for that. Uh, I think one of the things that have become quite you have to find a way to begin to talk if you are not already talking. We need to engage all possible avenues that will make our voices to be heard. Uh, in this day and age, if you don't present what you have, you slow down your progress. And so let's note that as uh, we continue our journey into the next 30 years. One of the problems with uh, our system uh, has been that when you want funding or biotechnology and related fields are quite expensive compared to other technologies because we are yet to put in place the facilities to run this area of research. And uh, like was mentioned earlier on, most of our funding has come from external sources. Not much has come from within. And so if Ghana intends to run fast with our advancement, then one of the things we need to do is to get in. In fact, the bulk of the funding ideally should come from within, from government sources and the private sector. In many of the laboratories I've been to across the world, you will realize that on the university campuses, the private sector have their offices dotted around the campus. All they are doing is uh, eavesdropping and waiting for any technology to be developed and then immediately it is picked. Of course, they are not just that they are pumped in money for these technologies to be developed. In Ghana, that is not the case. If you have a proposal from research facility and that from other social events like dancing and etc., trust me, you will get money for the social program. You will not get for the research proposal from the private sector or even government. So we need to continue as scientists with this dialogue. Let's keep dialoguing with private sector and government and hope that someday there will be paradigm shifts and we'll have a lot more of our funding coming. Um, the funding has mainly been private sector driven and we need to see how we can cultivate that. One binary staff at this point. Binary is 30 years. And uh, this is where in our life has come from. A group of people over the years have worked at this institute. So anyone who finds himself in Binari, you have to just run your best part of the relay until you hand over your baton. First, I teach everything, our energies, our time, to cultivate and drive the development of this institution. That way, just thank you. It's still there for you. We are starting the program, progressing and ending with the same energy. Blazing the biotechnology trail in Ghana, the Binaris. That's his former will come from the director of Binari. Thank you very much, um, everybody. Thank you for to be here with us. I just want to make a few comments based on the discussions that have uh, gone on. Um, I want to say that Binari. Paul Beres laid a very solid foundation for us. And 
thankfully, those of us who are taking over from them or who have taken over from them and are currently working in I am about the oldest among the scientists, not the oldest. There are people who are older than me, but we are all more like a, a cohort. And for our generation, we still have about 10 years more who will be handing over the baton to. If you look at the generation gap between myself and my predecessor, there was a gap where us and the people who have retired. Thankfully, we don't have that gap between us and the people who are behind us. And I am hopeful to remain and we'll be able to hand over to them when we are leaving. But that said, Binari has about 42 scientists and more than 50%. Now, if you have more than 20 PhDs in an institution, that is a very solid human resource that we can leverage upon to achieve greater height. And Professor Apia, were done by people who had not attained their PhD at the time. Most of them attained their PhD towards the latter part of their with first degrees and masters who were doing these wonderful things. So it means that for us who have attained PhDs whilst we are at this youthful stage, we should be able to excel and do much better than that. And I want to challenge us that. In the next 30 years, the story that will be told of Binari should be more beautiful and more palatable than we have told today. And I am committed that in my turn the fortunes of Binari around. There were issues about the radiation of mango. I remember, and if uh, Mr. Dujan if you will remember, that the USDA, just like that, about 10 years ago or more, and it was around the same time they were working with Indians on the same thing, another Agua initiative, to help to America. Somehow, we didn't complete the process. It was truncated. We were not in charge. It was being coordinated by West Africa Trade Peace today. And um, it's something that since that challenge is still there, and as a country, we still have the quest to conquer the American market. And um, topic, see how we can leverage on what we have already and the partnerships we have to see if we can be able to do that. Then to, to work, because for any technology to see the light of day, it is the private sector that must take that technology. As the scientists who develop the technologies, who do all the beautiful things in the lab, demonstrate it and mesmerize people with our science. But if the private sector cannot buy into it, in the past 30 years, our engagement with the private sector and industry hasn't been that strong. And it's an area that we will need to and see how we'll build stronger relations with industry. In my own small way, through my career, I have tried very hard, and my career is for a 30th anniversary, and there is another one that is coming in November. Um, Professor Danko, thank you very much once again for delivering this lecture. Thank you, Dr. Amite, for moderating the day for us. And for our board members and, our, and the retired staff of Binari and Gaek, who have taken time to join us here and share your experiences with us, we thank you very much for coming. We thank you, all the staff of Gaek and the directors who are here to be part of this uh, public lecture. And our friends who join us online, um, we shared the links far and near, and a lot of people join us online. Thank you very much for joining us. And you have heard a true binary story today. And be our ambassadors and go on and tell that story to other people. I also want to thank the media people, our multimedia, who are covering this and taking it online, and the mainstream media who are here uh, to report the, the lecture and everything that transpired here.
we are hopeful that the true story will be told out there. And we'll continue to trample this on the hilltops for everybody to know the good work that Binari is doing in our food systems. Thank you very much. The director has already run down the appreciation, so I will not say more. We have heard the Binari story. We are taking home the beautiful message of Blazing Biotechnology Trail in Ghana. The binary story. With time, we all become biotechnologists by heart. With biology, we all know technology is possible. Officially, the deputy director will take some announcements. Kindly permit me to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Boating Osei Ajumai from Ghana Export Import Bank. Thank you for joining us. We also have Dr. Henry Alassan, also from Ghana Export Import Bank. We will take a few announcements. We've all received refreshment from Binari. When we are filing out, I will plead with you that Binari needs to generate money. So we have a commercial yogurt production hub Make sure you pick two, four, or even ten bottles of yogurt. One is five Ghana cities. Thank you very much, MC. My director has already given a vote of thanks. So, a few announcements. After this session, we'll have a group picture with our invited guests and uh, former staff of Binari outside. Um, just a few announcements. The celebration continues. In October 5th, We'll have another session, as stated earlier, and that will be in the area of nuclear science and technology in Ghana's agri-food system. And we'll have a, a panel discussion during that time. That will be on the 5th of October, 2023. If there's a change, we'll let you know. And then on the 6th, we'll have the anniversary debate uh, in Gaek here. So please take notes, mark your calendars. We hope to see you in October. Uh, we need your support in terms of funding. We need to we'll come knocking at your door. Please uh, be ready. Thank the Knox Studio, they've made this program also airborne. The dignitaries will file out first, and then we can also follow because the group photography will continue. I've been your MC, Matilda Ousuansa. It's been a beautiful day, so bye-bye to each other. And to the Knox Studio, we are grateful. We have closing prayer. We started with prayer, so we will still take blessings from the Lord. Kindly permit me to invite Mr. Khalid Kusi to give us the closing prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, we started with prayers and definitely we should end with prayers. So I will urge all of you. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, yes, we are very thankful to Almighty Allah for sailing us through this program by giving us a wonderful lecture from our speakers. We pray that Almighty Allah has strength, energy to overcome the challenges that Binary as an institution faces. We also pray that Almighty Allah, the provider, searches. We also pray that Almighty Allah give us the strength to disseminate our, our, our disseminate our the group. We also pray that all the participants here, Allah give us the 
I like give us strength, energy, and long life so that we be nary as an organization. Ya Allah, we pray that whoever do not make this labor also hears the success story of binary. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Arahman Rahim, Malik Yomidin, Iya Kana Budua, Iya Kana Stain, Idinas and Amta Alehim, Gayru Magdubi Alehim, Walla Dolin, Amen. Amen, I Rasulullah bin Ma in Rasulun, Wal Muminin. When we file out, thank you. I will be right here. I would like to see the official media in our midst. Mr. Samuel. Mr. Fori Francis from the Ghana News Agency. We are grateful you came. Miss Juliet Safo from the Daily Graphic. We are happy you are here. Mr. Charles Mensah from OTEC FM. Multimedia. I think we can meet right here. The group photograph. Room. Binary yogurt, binary yogurt, binary yogurt. Grab a bottle that is 250 mils for five Ghana cities. Delicious.